What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily, and in this video, we are checking out the new Revel 4 and Revel 4 Plus smartphones. Now, I actually got a lot of requests from you guys to check these devices out, and for good reason. If you aren't already familiar, the Revel brand is T-Mobile's own, but the devices themselves are from TCL and are similar to the Alcatel family of phones. If that's all a little confusing, don't worry it's a lot to connect. But just know that these devices are sold direct from T-Mobile, as well as their prepaid brand Metro, and they are very affordable budget devices. I'll talk about the prices and the features and the specs in just a minute, but let's first go ahead and unbox these phones and see what all comes inside the package. First things first, pulling off the lid of the box, we're immediately greeted by the phones themselves. And at first glance, it is a little difficult to tell these phones apart, but just know there are quite a few very important differences that separate them, which we will get into momentarily. Digging a little deeper inside the box, you also get this little packet, and inside is actually just the instructional booklet and the SIM ejector tool sort of hiding there underneath. There's no case or anything like that that's included with these phones. Underneath that is where you'll find the USB charging brick, and this is where you'll see the first difference between the phones, actually. The Revel 4 Plus includes the larger, faster, quick charge power power brick while the regular Revel 4 has the smaller power brick. In addition to that, both phones do get a USB-A to USB-C charging cable, and these are kind of actually really nice. They're thick, braided nylon cables, which I don't think I've seen included with any smartphones before, but especially not budget devices like these. So with all that stuff out of the way, here are the Revel 4 and the Revel 4 Plus devices. And right off the bat, let's talk about what these phones cost and where you can actually get them from. Now, both of these devices are going to be sold through T-Mobile, as well as their prepaid subsidiary Metro, and since T-Mobile and Sprint have merged, you can also now get these Revel phones through Sprint as well. If you want to pay the full price up front for these phones, the regular Revel 4 is going to cost $120, and that's the same price no matter what carrier you go with, and the Revel 4 Plus, which offers some additional features and extras, currently costs $190 again, no matter where you buy it from. So both of these phones should come in at under 200 bucks, which I think puts them in that budget category. And if you're a new customer to one of these carriers or even an existing customer, I'd imagine they may have some deals and discounts to get the cost of these phones down even further if you sign a service contract and all that jazz. But in general, these are, in my opinion, very affordable devices. And if you're interested in picking up one of these phones for yourself or wanna do some comparison shopping of your own, I'll leave some links down below in the video description to where you can get these phones at their cheapest current prices. Physically, like I mentioned earlier, these phones look pretty close to one another, but I think first off you should likely be able to tell that the Revel 4 Plus is slightly larger than the standard Revel 4. The Revel 4 Plus is a 6.5 inch phone while the regular 4 comes in at 6.2 inches, and it's not a huge difference really, you mostly just get some extra height going with the 4 Plus, they're really the same width pretty much, but either way I think both of these devices are a decent size. Design wise they both have that V shaped notch for the camera and and a very large bottom bezel, which all in all isn't a huge deal really, but this design I think does look a bit dated now in 2020, even for phones at this price point. No matter which phones you do go with, just know that since these are budget devices, they are of course budget builds. Both phones have a rear plastic cover with slightly different shades of gray. The 4 Plus has a shinier, lighter sort of metal color, while the regular Revel 4 is more of a dark green gray with no shine. The frames of these phones seem to be metal, so in the hand they still feel pretty nice, they've got some weight to them, and I don't necessarily consider them to be cheap devices, but just keep in mind that with this choice in budget materials, you also miss out on things like water resistance and wireless charging. Neither phone has either of those features. Taking a look around at everything else, on the left side you've got your SIM and SD card tray, so expandable storage on both of these phones, which is great. On the right 
side, there's the pink T-Mobile branded power button and volume buttons. And one thing to note on the Revel 4 Plus, this power button actually lights up when you plug the phone into charge and serves as a notification light, which is a nice touch. It's something you don't get on the regular Revel 4 for whatever reason. Up top, both phones also have the good old headphone jack, which is nice to see. And down below, there's the USB-C charging ports, microphone, and single speaker setup. Around back, we've got some differences in the camera setup as well between the two phones, which I'll get into. But below that, both phones also have that rear-mounted physical fingerprint sensor. And with this, I found that both phones basically unlock at about the same time. With a fingerprint sensor nowadays, there's really no complaints in speed. It's about as good as it gets. Now, both phones do also have face unlock. And with this method, I did find the Revel 4 Plus to almost always be noticeably faster in getting to the home screen versus the regular Revel 4. In regards to the displays, we're technically dealing with similar specs and resolutions, but I actually want to go over some differences that I've seen right away that might be worth considering. First off, like I mentioned earlier, the Revel 4 is the smaller 6.2 inch display, while the 4 Plus is a slightly larger 6.5 inch phone. But both phones come in at 720p resolution. The Revel 4 has a 1520 by 720 resolution display, while the 4 Plus is 1600 by 720. They are also both LCD displays as well. So like I said, up to this point, there's really nothing different with the tech specs aside from the size. But side by side, for whatever reason, I think the 4 Plus has a noticeably better display. In certain instances, the 4 Plus appears to be brighter and more colorful, while the regular Revel 4 has almost a duller, grayer looking screen to me. I think both of these phones offer fine viewing experiences just in general, but if you're really nitpicky about color, the Revel 4 Plus seems to have the advantage. Besides that, there's really no other major differences. Both phones have the bottom chin that stands out a bit, like I said earlier, the notch up top as well, so you aren't getting a crazy high screen to body ratio. All in all, watching whatever kind of content you want is a pretty good experience considering the lower end screens here anyway. And by the way, the single downward speaker on these phones, I actually found to be better than expected. It gets super loud and sounds really nice. And here's a quick sample so you can get an idea. When it comes to the internal specs, this I think is probably where the biggest difference exists between these two phones, and it's likely going to be the deciding factor for most people. While both of these phones are budget devices and you should expect them to have lower end specs, I do think the difference is made more extreme than maybe it even should be. The regular Revel 4 is powered by the MediaTek Helio A22 processor just two gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage with that SD card slot, which I would recommend you utilize since only about 24 gigabytes of storage is actually usable. The Revel 4 Plus packs the Qualcomm Snapdragon 665 chipset, an Adreno 610 GPU, four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage with again, the option to pop in an SD card. Now on one hand, both of these phones ship with Android 10 out of the box and and considering they're obviously very heavily branded with T-Mobile and Metro stuff plastered all over the box and even on the devices themselves, there's interestingly not a whole lot of T-Mobile or Metro bloatware on these phones, which is nice. Just a couple of apps, but nothing too terrible. And out of the box, they feel relatively fast and fluid with Android 10. The thing to consider here though is that with a side-by-side -side test, while the Revel 4 initially tries to keep up with the Revel 4 Plus, by the time we have five or six apps open and running, the difference to me is like night and day. With just two gigabytes of RAM and a very low-end MediaTek processor, I think the Revel 4 is almost underpowered even for its price point. If you're doing casual everyday stuff and not pushing this phone too hard, it's not a huge deal. But even just having a few regular old apps open, you can see this phone starts to 
fall behind. The Revel 4 Plus, to be totally honest, I think performs quite well, all things considered, and with more and more apps loaded up in the background, the device handles everything pretty well. As we start to go back to some of those earlier apps that should stay preloaded, you can see two gigs of RAM just isn't enough to keep the Revel 4 current, and with everything that's running, it seems to be that it all needs to be reloaded once again. So in general, if performance is a big thing for you, I think no question, just go with the 4 Plus. It's easily worth that extra money. If you want to save some dollars and mostly just use the phone for phone calls and texts and a little bit of web browsing, stuff like that, there's nothing wrong with the standard Revel 4, but in my opinion, don't have much higher expectations than that. And as far as the battery capacity, the Revel 4 has a 3500 milliamp capacity, while the Revel 4 Plus has a slightly larger 4000 milliamp battery inside. But with this, I'd say don't expect too much more life out of the Revel 4 Plus in comparison, simply because you've got that larger display and more powerful specs to deal with. Though since I've only just unboxed these phones, I'm looking forward to further testing out their longevity over the next couple of days. Finally, when it comes to the cameras, we've got some pretty important differences here too, actually. Interestingly enough, the regular Revel 4 has just one lens around back, a 13 megapixel shooter, which really in 2020 is kind of surprising even on a budget phone like this. And up front, the selfie camera is a five megapixel shooter. The Revel 4 Plus has a dual camera setup, which consists of a better 16 megapixel main lens paired with a five megapixel depth sensor for portrait shots and a better 16 megapixel selfie camera up front as well. Now, capability wise, both phones have plenty of shooting modes to choose from, including Pro Controls, which is nice to see. And the Revel 4 has some extra fun modes like filters and stop motion, but you'll notice that the Revel 4 does not have any portrait mode at all, while the Revel 4 Plus can shoot portrait shots both with the rear dual lenses and front selfie camera. But furthermore, the Revel 4 Plus can actually shoot 4K video, which I think is pretty impressive on this phone, and again, is not something the regular Revel 4 can do. There are also some additional features and extras with the 4 Plus that you can see in the settings menu there. And in practice, it should really come as no surprise that the Revel 4 Plus is going to be the better picture and video taker, no matter how you look at it. The Revel 4 to me seems a little too bright, a little too colorful and lackluster with the detail, while the Revel 4 Plus offers a true to life shot with enough detail, I'd say. And like I said, you've got portrait mode too, which takes things up a notch still. If pictures and videos are even of the slightest importance, to you, the Revel 4 Plus is going to be the way to go. So all in all, I think these two new phones are really interesting devices. Nowadays, it takes a lot to compete in the budget space. Phones that sell for $200 or less have gotten really good, and I think there's some potential with these new Revel devices, especially if you are an existing T-Mobile or Metro or Sprint customer. If it were up to me, I think nine times out of 10, I'd probably just spend the extra money and get the 4 Plus, since it really is just that much better in in a lot of ways. But what do you guys think about these phones? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to know your thoughts, of course. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video though. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.